Hello Internet, I'm Guy. What you're looking at here is a bunch of hole punches that are designed to punch holes in fabric. Here's a punch out right here. Turns out my friend recently inherited a whole bunch of uh, tools from her dad who died recently and he was a lifetime avid racing sailor and boat builder and uh, sailboat builder in particular. So these are left over from punching holes in the corners of sails to mount the grommets that the lines and sheets would tie to, particularly this one right here. They, you would typically have a very large grommet. The thing is they're dull. Um, and this one, I think, was just made from a piece of scrap uh, pipe because it's just terrible. It wasn't uh, well made. It must have been handmade with a file or something. It doesn't work very well. And when we tried to use, oh, excuse me, uh, when we tried to use this one, it was too dull to even cut through fabric. So what I'm going to do is put these on the lathe and sharpen them up and then test them on some fabric and see how well they work. Uh, that's the whole plan here. So stick with me. First thing I need to do is check the bevel angle of the cuts on the edges of these cutter heads. And so it's 15 degrees. I'm going to set my uh, cross slide over to 15 degrees. Uh, tighten that down in a second here. Oh no, wait a minute. That's the wrong direction, silly. Okay, this way. That's Mr. Dyslexic to you. Okay, get that tightened down. Get the collet in there, and I've got, fortunately, collets for every size. This is really convenient. They're, they're normal sizes in, in uh, inch uh, imperial dimensions. Now you can see already that that one is really wonky on the end there, and uh, first thing I want to do basically is clean up the end. So here we go. I'm sure this is the right cutter for this particular steel, and this isn't necessarily the right steel for a cutter head either. It seems to be very soft, and I'm not very well versed in all the different types of metal, but this was obviously some piece of scrap steel that whoever made this found in their shop and they used it. Uh, it's, it's not sharpening real well. But I'm going very slowly and very carefully. I, I may be running the lathe a little fast too, so in uh, a few later tries I'm going to slow it down. But just, I'm just going very carefully, taking these very, very light passes here. And I've got a little lube on here that's smoking off, as you can see. And little chunks are flying off there. You see it's turning blue. So let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. Ooh, that's still hot. Yeah. So I'm going to then finish it up with my big lathe file here. Tidy that up. Just sharpen it down to the very sharp edge. And that looks okay. I think that will work. All right, let's get rid of this one and we'll go to the next one. It looks okay. Another collet. This one also, I think, was handmade, too. Um, it just doesn't look the same as the factory ones. So I'm just going to get the cutter in here and set it up so it's all aligned, ready to make that first pass. And here we go. You can see now that, obviously, the original cut was not concentric, uh, even in the sped up footage here you can see dark and light patterns going by um, so this new hole will be much more concentric to the cylinder which may or may not be of any real value to someone who's just punching a hole so I'm going to climb, tidy this up one more time one final very light pass here and that seems to be working just fine it looks nice and shiny but then when I look at it more closely it's kind of tearing out. It's uh, The sharp edge there is all damaged. So let me cut that off and I'll give it another try. I think what I need to do is, particularly with this particular piece of steel, I need to run the machine a little slower. I'm not really sure. Oh, that's still a mess. Okay, so hidden there I didn't show you. I did one more pass to clean that off and then another pass along the edge. Here. I'm just trying to skip forward to save you time here. Get some of that junk out of there and let's have a look at this. 
Yeah, and that feels sharp. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, the next biggest one here, going up through all of the different collet sizes. This is a manufactured one that actually has an internal bevel and an external bevel. Um, I don't think the actual hole diameter matters that much for the grommets, but I'm only going to work the outside surface of this, which was so dull it was actually rounded over on the cutting edge there. It just would not cut. So again, a very light pass, slightly slower RPM here. I think that's working better. It's not tearing out like the other one did. So once again, I'm using some 400 uh, emery paper just to clean it up, tighten it up, sharpen it up. Now this is the big cutter. This is the one that you would definitely use on the corner of a sail to uh, attach the sheet or the line to the sail. This one I did didn't really feel the need to do uh, a whole lathe turning tool on it, um, so I just sharpened it up a little bit with the 400 grit because it was already pretty sharp. Um, I just wanted to kind of tidy it up a bit more. So here we go, testing it out. Give it a good whack with the hammer. That didn't go all the way through, but I can tear that off. And if it were fabric, um, an X-Acto blade or scissor could take it off. But let me try the other ones, and I'll come back to that one again. So this is the biggest one, the last one I did, and that's fine. A nice firm tap there. These are the handmade ones, presumably. But look at that, they cut just perfectly. So let me try again with the big one and just give it a much harder whack this time. Oh yeah, if it'll cut paper, it'll cut fabric, I'm sure. So please remember to subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up and I hope you've enjoyed the video and see you next time.